What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I am simply gonna show you guys how I create my YouTube thumbnails using a site called Canva. Let's get right into this. <music> So I'm just going to switch over to the site here and show you guys on my screen exactly what I'm doing step by step. So as you can see, we are logged into Canva on my accounts. Now that is the first thing I recommend you doing if you're going to be creating thumbnails using this site because they will save the templates that you create so you can make future thumbnails and keep everything on your channel consistent, which is a huge save for me. So right here, I'm just going to maneuver down. And here was where your designs are gonna be saved. And all I do is click see all and then all the thumbnails that I create are here. So as you guys can see, there's some for the games played and finished series that I do, recent game pickups, the puzzle videos that I've done, flipping for profit series I do here on the channel. So everything that I do, my thumbnails, even my hockey cards ones, I try to keep everything consistent with the designs of my thumbnail, which is a huge time saver, and I'm glad that Canva has this feature. Now, I'm just gonna go into a generic one that it created for the purpose of this video here. So here we go, everything is loading up on Canva. It is just a plain background right now for the thumbnail. The best thing about Canva is that you can create not only YouTube thumbnails, but you can create your YouTube background, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, virtually anything that you want to create for online, for anything on social media, or even like anything in ge general that you wanna create a cool design for, even posters, brochures, things like that, so you can do it with Canva. You just have to select the right format. This right here, what I automatically selected for my videos is the exact size that I need or that you need for your YouTube thumbnails. So right now we're just gonna go through the left tabs here. Up first is your templates, which is something that I don't normally use. You can go in and look and select a template that's already created and try to work around that. There is the uploads tab, which is your uploads that you uploaded from your YouTube, uh, from your laptop, sorry. And that's literally anything that you want to input into your thumbnail or make your thumbnail around. We have photos, which is one that I use highly for anything, including the background. Normally I go under the photos tab instead of the backgrounds tab, because the backgrounds tab, it's mostly plain colored or Normally I can't find what I'm looking for, so I'll go under photos, elements, which is really cool. So anything you wanna put on your uh, thumbnail, like for example, the like button or anything like that, a smiley face even, anything that you want to do and put onto your uh, thumbnail is on elements. So even if I want to put text over top of a square or something like that, it's just a matter of putting the shape there and putting the text over top of it to make it blend in or make it really cool and creative. You have your text, which I'll get into in a second, different text formats and things like that. Music, which I don't normally touch. Videos, which I don't use at all. Uh, background, which like I said, I'll do photos instead. And that is everything on the side panel. So first I'm gonna start off with the background for this thumbnail, just to show you guys how I do that background and what I start with. Now, normally I'll start with the backgrounds and then I'll end up changing it if I want to make it work around everything else that I've already added to the thumbnail. So I'm just going to start with one that I've already used recently. And like I showed you just here, you just go to the corner and click and drag. Or if you just want to use the photo and resize it, you can put it here. You can crop it, use effects, filters, and things like that. Adjust it easily and do it like that. But normally I'll use the photos like I just showed you in the background. I'll just click and drag it to a corner. It automatically puts it the full size of the thumbnail, which is really helpful. I like this one more, so we're gonna stick with that one. Next is adding text, and that you just click the text tab. And I always just click add a heading, the top one here, but you can go and use any of these ones down here. Click and drag, and you can change the text in them with the creative aspects to it. Now here, I'm just gonna change the text. Let's do that, you just go up here, you highlight it, Go up here, you click, and I'm just gonna change it to just the basic headline right now, or the basic fonts. We're gonna change the size of the text with this tab here. You can also just click and drag the corners to make it bigger or smaller. Changing the color is here. I'm just gonna leave it at white, just like that. Now, some text you can bold, you can use italics. Um, this one here, you can underline but some of the other ones, you can use some of the other features here. 
Now your alignment is here. So let's say I have it like that right now. It's centered, but I can change it to the beginning, center, the ends. Normally I'll just leave things centered. You can do bolt, uh, bolts and points by just clicking this, change it to the one or taking it away. Now with anything that you add to your thumbnail, there is these parts over here that you have to know. So the garbage can is to delete the text, the highlighted text. There is this one here to duplicate. If you click it, it will duplicate whatever is highlighted, not just text. This works for photos as well. This one here is changes the transparency just like that. And then position, then you, if you have multiple things here, and change this one to the black just to show you guys. Clicking backward will put it back one and putting it, clicking it again will put it to the very back. So depending on how many different layers that you have on your thumbnail, this is a great tool to know how to use. And the last part for text that you might want to know, which is really cool, is under effects. So what I usually use, I keep it at none. You can change it up here and click the different ones. Like I said, I leave that at none, but here, I always like outlining my text and I'll do it like this and you'll click that. And now you can see right here, it's outlined. But instead of that, let me just backtrack here. I'm going to double the text. I'm going to leave that white. This one here, I'm going to go under effects. Sorry, under effects, go to hollow. You can change the thickness of the outline. And then here I'm going to change this text to black. And whenever you add it over top, you basically just did an outline of your text, which this is a fairly new feature that Canva has included on the site before you could not do any outlines on the text yourself. I was forced to have to add an element of a square or a rectangle and stretch it the full length of the text I was using and putting it behind the text. Now I can actually have outlined text, which is really amazing. And I'm glad they added that. Now to upload your own images, you just go under upload, upload media, click device, and then it's gonna come up this tab here. So what I'm gonna upload is just the Canva logo. And once it finishes loading here, this bar will com be complete. Now in the process that it's doing that, you can still click and drag it. Again, if you click it in the corner, it's going to just snap it the full image. So you're gonna lose your background. Just click it off in the center here. You can resize it, do everything here. You can flip it horizontally, vertically, anything that you need. You can crop it. If there's a part of the image that you want to crop out, you can do that, which is a huge time saver in my opinion and a huge feature that I love. And you can just add it in the corner or add it anywhere you want, which is really cool. So that is how you upload your own content. So if you go on Google images, if the stock photos on Canva are not good enough for you or stuff that you don't want to use, Google images, go to the two ones that have a transparent background, find what you need, and you can upload it this way. Now I'm actually gonna go under elements and show you guys this fairly quick. So recently I've used this one. Again, you just click and drag it. It won't snap it to the full size, but there's that. If you want lines, so if you want to do your own underline, you can do it like this, change the size, go here, change the color, which is in the top right corner, or sorry, top left corner and you can do your un own underlining. You can actually add shapes, which like I said before, it had the background feature here where you can do your own outlines. I was forced to do this all the time before. And then I'll put it, sorry, I doubled it there. I would put it to the back like this. So backward, backward, backward. And then I would change it to likely black or something like that. So a lot of my videos used to have this as it. So instead of outlining them, I would just have a square box behind it. So that is really cool that you can add these elements and do different things. I usually make really cool designs with it. If it's just basic text and I need something that will catch the eye, I'll do something a little bit graphic with the shapes and everything, try to make everything stand out a little bit more. So the last part is to save your thumbnail onto your laptop so you can use whenever you want, when you want to upload your video. And that is simply right here in the top right corner, the button that says download, you're going to click it. And then you're going to choose where it's going to download right now. For me, it's going to just go under the downloads option on my laptop. And then you're going to click here where it says download and it's going to download it. Now, sometimes there might be a delay in downloading it. If an image that you uploaded is taking a little bit of time. Also, you have to remember there's certain images that will not, and also certain sizes that will not be able to successfully be uploaded to Canva. But this is a simple 
basic run through of how to make thumbnails using Canva. Again, it's very, very simple. If you guys want me to do a more in-depth feature and of how to create thumbnails or just in general how to use Canva, let me know down below. But this is a basic run through of how I create my thumbnails using the site. Again, fairly, fairly simple to use. Doesn't take, in my opinion, too much time, but certain thumbnails take a little bit more time because of course I want to be a little bit more creative and try to come up with a little bit more ideas to do for certain thumbnails, but definitely an easy run through that. Anybody that is just starting out, even a small YouTuber, can get the understanding and knowledge they need to create their thumbnails using Canva. If you guys have any questions with Canva, let me know down in the comments below. I just wanted to do a simple, quick tutorial with Canva to show you guys how I use it and the simple things that I use with the site. I'm gonna leave this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please take care. Peace.